to Three Kitchens, a home cooking podcast. I'm Sarah Somosundaram here with my co-hosts, Heather Dyer. Hello. And Erin Walker. Hi. How are you ladies this week? We're good, thank you. Very well. Thanks for asking. I wanted, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but in the, you follow the quarantine kitchen on Facebook, there's this little Facebook, local Facebook group where people were like swapping right. recipes and yeah. stuff. Yes. And somebody posted this morning, like, I don't know how people do this. Must be the people who use Twitter. I don't use Twitter, so I'm not sure. But it looks like someone uh, tweeted this. And what she wrote was, every chef right now, today I'm going to show you how to make something simple with ingredients everyone has in their pantry since you can't (laughs) go to the store. (laughs) I'm starting with Madagascar vanilla, hemp milk, and a single feather from a dodo bird. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, I thought you might laugh at that too. I thought it was funny. That was good. And <laughs> and, uh, and and true in many ways. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always coming across those recipes where I feel like I have to Google half of the ingredients. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just recently, and maybe this is just me, but I didn't know what a capsicum was. Oh, okay. And oh, I a, don't either. <laughs> it's, it's bell peppers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is it like one of those things where it's like a, the Australian word versus the American word? Yeah. I think you're exactly right. Okay. Yeah. Capsicum. Okay. And I think it's, it's also British because Singaporeans say capsicum. Oh. And I'm from, I, my parents are from Singapore. I lived there for a bit. So. Well, I'm glad I'm not the only one who had to Google it. Thank you, Heather. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> count on me. <laughs> uh, maybe we should be clear, like at the beginning of this podcast, we are not professionally trained cooks we are not professional cooks in any sense of the word nor are we professional podcasters (laughs) yes yes (laughs) what kind of professionals are we then uh we get things done (laughs) (laughs) i maybe we shouldn't go down that rabbit hole that i'm not sure (laughs) okay so sarah is talking about bow so tell us what a bow is please they're just buns that are steamed and they usually have delicious bits of filling in it like my favorite char siu or barbecue pork very sweet and savory now that all these various asian foods and chefs have risen in popularity i love seeing the new takes on what people are doing with traditional bows and now there are things like bao sandwiches and bao burgers and oh. all sorts of fillings. So I have yeah. a question then. Yes. When you say traditional bao, where is bao traditionally from? Oh, here. Yeah. <laughs> this is a conversation <laughs> that I'm not sure that I am qualified to start because, you know, like many other foods, there will be a few countries that claim them, right? right. So yeah. um, I always grew up thinking they were Chinese. Okay. But then the Taiwanese have different characteristics to the bao, oh, right? Or fillings and such. Absolutely. And then, um, you know, as I kept reading about baos, then the Mongolians have baos and the oh. Japanese have baos and they might be called different things, but essentially Ooh, it is the yum. steamed bun. There are things called fried baos. So this is making me think of dumplings. Yeah. yeah. But it's bread. Instead of a dumpling dough, it's a bready dough? Yes, because it does have to rise. Oh, okay. Just like bread. Basically, instead of putting it in the oven and baking it, you steam it. Ah. And that's how it's cooked. Okay, I've been playing around with the bao recipe for a few months now. You guys know. I'm always yes. talking to you about it. We hear about it. We, we hear about it, but we haven't tasted it yet. Yes. yes. <laughs> this is true. This is true. <laughs> None of that cute bread has come our way. So some of the recipes that I have come across just use yeast. Never talk about baking powder. And then, of course, I keep looking just to complicate my life and baking powder comes into play. So do you use yeast and baking powder or are you using yeast or baking powder instead of one or the other? Because then you're changing it from a what I would call a quick bread to a yeast bread. Sorry, what would be the quick bread? With baking powder. Traditional old fashioned cookbooks call those quick breads. Because they rise quicker? Because they don't involve a rising. It's usually a wet batter that you pour into a pan. So like a muffin or a loaf is when I've used 
a baking powder, whereas yeast is always in something I need or something that sits overnight. So great points, things that I have been learning about. And so when I did try the baking powder, this is a good point uh, that you bring up, Erin, because I may have overproofed that one batch oh. and because maybe I think it rose a little too much. So you still let it proof? Yeah, I do. So maybe I shouldn't have... <laughs> I loved that bow the best. So let me explain my little journey here. Take us away. I get completely sidetracked when I decide to delve into the bow world. And I'm going to blame Instagram for this. Uh, So thinking that it knows me so well and that algorithm took my life down, (laughs) starts introducing me to these bow posts from uh, one woman named uh, Wang Meiji. And she not only makes these beautifully smooth, sort of squishy kind of bows, she shapes them into these things like dragons, cute characters. Uh, She makes them look like potatoes, like it actually looks like a potato. And then you open it and it's it's an actual steamed bun. Oh, it's like those crazy cakes that look like a yeah. shoe and then you cut into it and it's a yeah. cake. And she's quite well known. And she has a storefront in Taiwan or China. I can't remember. And then and then she has this YouTube video on how to shape these like a simple little thing like clouds with a cute little face on it. And it, it it's absolutely smooth. You would never guess that it's a bun. Ah. So this has been your inspiration because we've seen some of the things that you've been making that that are pretty cool little Totoro and right the ox for your the ox and like little pigs and like adorable things. So it has been my inspiration because she said it was simple. <laughs> I go out and you believed her. I believed her and she <laughs> <laughs> clearly had some sort of belief in me. You know, I went out, I got all the tools that she told me to get, all sorts of shaping tools. And then the more I get into this world, I go out and I buy this recipe book called Mantulicious because I think that now I am capable of dedicating a space in my cookbook corner to cute steamed bun recipe books. And and her name is Zhu Ren, who wrote this book. Another woman who um, clearly did not understand people like me when when she was writing how about how simple things can be. I get to work, right? I start making these creations, many late nights, a lot of swearing, a lot of <laughs> odd kitchen tools later. I come to resent these two women who have come into my life. I they're just, you know, they make it look easy. They're trying to inspire you. Yeah, they, they create and, beautiful things. And now you hate them. <laughs> I hate them. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm just joking. I, these women are amazing. I, I, I'm kidding. <laughs> you know, they clearly work very hard. You know, they not only shape this, but it's all about texture as well with a bow. And you do have to check this out. Like, I mean, it, it's... Yes beyond like I cannot explain to you how amazing these creations are I did create a few things that I'm I'm proud of as well a little bit proud of but my kids liked taking it for school lunches and and their friends commented on them what you create is is pretty darn amazing oh thank you pretty darn it really is yeah Yeah. how do you keep the dough from just kind of becoming a blob like how do you keep those little fine little details it's like stuck on you mean yeah like when you stick stuff on how does it stay there and not just like like an ear becomes a blob on the face <laughs> like you know what I mean like a blob as in it falls or yeah wouldn't it just open? sort of move and change its shape or it hasn't happened to me yet I mean I use milk to stick it on oh. uh, and a paintbrush guys I, I have paintbrushes now to paint yes. milk on we've known about you and your food tweezers for a while now. <laughs> <laughs> We know. At least they were only food tweezers. Now I've got food tweezers. I've got food paintbrushes. I've got things that have really ruined my life. I'm just joking, guys. I I love bows. (laughs) I have just abandoned the cute stuff for now. With all the experimenting I have done, 
uh, I think it is family consensus that the cake flour was the best. Ah. The problem with the cake flour that I find is it's so soft that to stuff it is a little bit of a challenge. Oh. So I'm going to try it again with a few things in mind for challenges. Um, the first thing is proofing. So my house during the winter is at a balmy 19 degrees Celsius. It's, uh, but it's, you know, cold for me and it's cold for the dough. So mm-hmm. I'm going to have to uh, figure out proofing time. And then one of my goals is making that bow as smooth as possible. I don't know if it actually does change the taste, but you know my obsession with nice looking food. I do want to make it like a nice looking bow, mm-hmm. right? And tasty, of course. So that's why I'm going to go with the cake flour. We'll see how it goes. Can I ask a question? Yes, you can. Thank you. (laughs) I love how she raises her hand too. So when you steam the bun, is it evenly cooked all around? Whereas when you put a bun in the oven, it will brown on top. (laughs) I'm I'm so mature. When you put a bun in the oven. I heard bun in the oven. I'm sorry, guys. It should uh, evenly cook all around. Maybe the bottom part might be a little different because it is on a parchment paper that gets put in the steamer. So it doesn't stick to the steamer. Okay. Well, you've made cute buns in the bun recipe of a dinner bun. Yes. And those have been baked. And so the outside gets like that crispy. Whereas these, do they stay? Is there that crispiness on the outside or is it kind of one texture all the way through? Not at all. Not at all. Erin, have you never eaten a bao? Uh, I feel like any bao that I have had has been long forgotten okay well this has to change that's well, what she's been trying to tell I, you i think i've need... dropped the hint a couple times <laughs> yeah i just i i just feel like i i i swore a lot while making those bows and i i didn't want to i didn't want to share that negative energy <laughs> with you so i did with my family instead um <laughs> These buns were made with hate. Here you go. (laughs) Anger. (laughs) Uh, I have enjoyed making the bows and just being a little bitter because because of what these women can create. It wasn't simple, was it? No, it was not simple. And so I think it will become a lot simpler if I just give up the cute stuff. You're just working on technique versus not doing anything fancy. I'm going to make a bow with cake flour. Okay. I am going to figure out whether I want to use baking powder or not. So these might be two batches. And then the third thing is, am I going to do a first rise before I shape them or shape them and then get them to rise? Ah. There is a difference. And, And I do also want to add that I have an interesting proofing trick that I came across. So if it does work for me, it will work for you you no matter what the temperature of your house is so let me test it out and Uh if I'm successful you're just gonna drop it off on my doorstep right (laughs) 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 we're gonna stay off the cute for now and we're gonna get right into the boat okay well I'm off to the test kitchen join us in a moment to find out if this turns out to be a bow chick bow wow or a bow 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 Want to join me down the rabbit hole? Check out these impressive women and their bow creations on Instagram. Zuren underscore Mantu and Wang Meiji Buns. Welcome back to Three Kitchens. We're about to find out how Sarah's bow turned out. So I think they turned out good. My family who has eaten many a bow thought they were good too, but of course they had some critiques. So on the last batch, I think I satisfied everyone's idea of a good bow. I'm going to post a recipe from Wang Meiji's YouTube instructional video for everyone. It is in Mandarin, but it okay. is, it's got subtitles. Okay. To, just to get started with the ingredients, because they're smaller batches. Okay. Right? And there are mm-hmm. many good recipes out there. But here are my takes from my test kitchen with the bow and the critiques from the family. Did I tell you about my family criticizing me and my food. <laughs> when is family not criticizing our food? <laughs> so I did not use baking powder. Oh, I didn't bother okay. about it. So Aaron, remember that little spiel you had about when baking powder comes into your recipes that you have come across? 
Yes. I read up a little bit about it and I, I took it right out of the equation. There was oh. no reason for a baking powder. Interesting. <laughs> My ideas may change as I keep playing around with bao recipes, but I made it with the cake flour. We all knew that, right? And then I needed it in my stand mixer until I got an ultra, ultra smooth dough. That is key. It looks like a yeah. beautiful cloud. And how long did that take? About 10 minutes. Okay. okay. That seems pretty typical for a dough. Mm-hmm. Very, like very smooth, nice. Like you almost want to play with it. You don't want to eat it, but. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> I think you did play with it anyway, didn't you, Sarah? Just a little. Just, 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 a, little just a little. But unlike the video, I let the dough rest for 30 minutes before I shaped it. Okay. And so keep in mind that the video is from someone who wants to keep the dough cold so that she can shape it into these cute little things before the dough overproofs. Right. Okay. And that was not uh, my goal this time. I wanted a dough that we can all make at home. And it tastes good. Can you quickly explain what proofing means? Oh, boy. She's asking them. Take this one away, Sarah. Oh, boy. Oh, no. <laughs> we, we might have to take this out. <laughs> oh, shit. Sorry. No, no. That's okay. <laughs> I honestly don't know. I'm, I'm not asking for the sake of the conversation. I just honestly don't know what that means. I think proofing has to do with developing the protein structure for the bun. It, when it's not proofed enough... It doesn't have that beautiful airiness inside. When it's overproofed, shockingly, it can actually collapse and become really dense. So you want that perfect proofing moment. And proofing just means letting it sit? I would say it's your second rise. That's right. So some people call the first bit rising and the second Mm -hmm. bit proofing. It really depends. And then the final proof being in the heat. That yeah. does the, the final kind of, um, which is when baking powder can come into play. <laughs> so, yes, I find I'm an underproofer. Ah, uh, okay. Because I get impatient and we have cold home. Mm-hmm. So I did the 30 minutes of, of rest. Okay. I rolled the dough out with my hands into this long, thin log to get okay. rid of all the bubbles. And this okay. is really important with bow. And you have to do this three times. And then after that, I weighed the dough out because I need everything to be the same size. I'm just that person. I roll them into balls. I flatten them with the edges thinner than the middle. I stuffed them. I put them aside on parchment paper and I let them proof. Okay. So this was always my issue. Just like you were saying, uh, Erin, proofing Mm -hmm. can be a hard thing depending on each each one's uh, house, the temperature, different kinds of dough, yeah. right? And uh, so this is how, you know, bao is proofed to the point that you want it to be. It should be about one and a half times the original size. Okay. The other is using that touch method. When you gently press down on a bow, if it's a slow spring back, you're good to go. That's a good proof. If it springs back quickly, then it's not proofed enough. Okay. And if it stays indented, you're kind of shit out of luck, right? <laughs> With the dough. It's too long. Yeah, you've, you've ah. overproofed it. Right. I learned this hack from the Mantelicious book that I bought. And so I got an old cylindrical prescription bottle that I don't use anymore. And I marked two markings. One was a centimeter from the bottom and one was 1.5 centimeters from the bottom. And after I stuffed the first bun... I took some dough, I filled it up to the centimeter mark, and I closed the lid. And I waited for that dough to rise to the 1.5 centimeter mark. Oh, smart. And then I tested it out with my the batch that I had. Mm -hmm. And and I did the touch test. And it was pretty much accurate. Oh, so you have like a control test. It's a control. (laughs) Yeah. Oh. Oh, that's smart. Right? So try that out at home. I think uh, I think it'll work for any any dough that needs hmm. to proof. Totally. Oh. <laughs> so the issues I had with this first batch was that my family prefers a thinner dough to the traditional bao. They like more filling and less of the bread, I guess. 
Okay. Right. And secondly, I didn't know how to, while I was making this vow, I didn't know how to encourage someone who gets, you know, a little bit freaked out about how do I fold a bow? This is like so ah, daunting. And I decided that I was going to make another batch because of my family that, you know, oh, it's too thick. The dough is too thick. So I tried it. <laughs> I, I did a, another batch with a thinner dough. I was kind of inspired by all these new shapes of bows and all these new things that people do with bows. And I thought I would fill it up in a different way. Okay. So. I did the exact same thing. I made the dough the exact same way. I let it rest for 30 minutes. I rolled out the bubbles after. But now, instead of weighing out the dough into little pieces, I took a rolling pin. I rolled out the entire thing into a sheet that was about 0.5 centimeters in thickness. I took a cookie cutter, a round cookie cutter. I made little circles. I took one circle. I put the filling in the middle of that circle. Don't take it too close to the edge. Otherwise it won't seal. I took another circle. I put it on top. I added some milk to the, the edges. Mm -hmm. And then I pressed it down to seal the edges around. Mm -hmm. That was the fastest bow I've ever made. My family loved the taste. Yeah. There was so much time left for proofing that I may have made some faces. (laughs) (laughs) When did you put the faces on before you let it? sit or after after it was sitting I I was looking at my my uh, prescription bottle with the dough and I'm like oh I've got I've got lots of time before it proves so I'm like oh I'm gonna make little faces and and eyes and and something I called a beak (laughs) they were definitely cuter than I thought they'd be since you said you weren't gonna do the cute (laughs) so cute but I didn't do it at the expense of the proofing time so Ah. so that was I kept oh, to that promise. So that's what gets in your way. You get so caught up I in do. the cuteness yeah. that you... I overproof. Overproof. Oh, uh-huh. I see. You know, Erin yeah. and I were just talking and mm-hmm. we were speculating how do those little bits, the faces, the ears, the beak, whatever, stay on there? Like it is not moving around. It's not budging. It's not like melting looking like you can't peel any of the pieces off. They're perfectly on there, but there's still a ridge. It's amazing how, how perfect the decorating parts are. The little bare mouth under the nose and like, (laughs) just like, so you have to remember that the difference is it doesn't rise as much. So the shape's not really changing that much. Okay, remember, it's only okay. one and a half times the original okay. size, right? So mm-hmm. that may be something that may have something to do with it. What did you use to color? Uh, I, I like to use natural, natural uh, food coloring. So uh, red is always beet powder. Yellow is turmeric. Black is charcoal. I use cocoa powder for brown. The orange was a mix between the beet and the turmeric. Oh, oh nice. Okay. Right? <laughs> yeah. And I use food powders. I don't use um, liquids, mm-hmm. like coloring powders. So yeah, just because my I do this a lot with my family. If you're going to do this once in a while, then use whatever color you like. But because I tend to, I tend to color my food <laughs> and make it cute and do all these <laughs> silly things with my food on a regular basis. I I go for the natural stuff. Right. Yeah. You wouldn't even know, though. It it looks so good. Oh, good, good, Uh good. The colors are just as bright and vibrant as anything that I've ever artificially colored. So yes. Oh, good. Sometimes I'm under the perception that using a natural food color will make it it'll be washed out looking or it won't be as vibrant and strong. And yeah, not at all in these. So what did you guys think? I I did uh, drop a couple of samples off with both of you. Yes, finally. (laughs) One from the first batch and one from the second. So the second batch was the flatter one. Owl. And the first batch was the round one. The bear. I loved it. And I'm, Mm -hmm. I think I'm in the same camp as your family in that I don't like it too doughy. I think that the bows I've had in the past were just a whole lot of dough yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, really big too. Like I like yeah. that these were smaller and almost more like a little, like a snack size yeah. as opposed to a giant, like when we've had bow before, we have to cut it in half and share it because it's so big and like, Oh um, gosh, this was like the perfect size, perfect amount of dough. 
super cute, yummy fillings. Mm -hmm. It was definitely a bow chicka bow wow. Yay! I did. <laughs> yep. You win. Um, I'm going <laughs> to ask that you drop at least, I don't know, a dozen a week. Yeah. Me. Uh, that'll be my order request. And I, I see why this. you were going insane <laughs> because yeah, the stuff that they were, pro they produce is <laughs> incredibly. Yeah. Oh my God. Like, how do they even, do they paint them after the fact? Cause they look so glossy. It's glossy. It's gold and sparkly yeah. and shiny. Like, like the glossy is, is from the steaming. Really? It's not like food paint or something on there. Uh, there could be maybe some, some details, but I most think it's of been it Photoshopped. Done. It's incredible. <laughs> let's, let's go with that. I like that. It's Photoshop. Oh it's not real. They're, they're not that talented. <laughs> oh, but they were. Okay. So I I don't regularly eat bao. As soon mm -hmm. as we had it, I realized, oh, yes, I've had these at dim sum before. Yes. And I totally agree with Heather. Uh, they're super big. They're tons of dough. And then the inside is very little bit of meat. Right. And they are overpoweringly doughy. And yeah. I'm a dough, I like breads, but yeah. they yeah. seem too doughy. I would agree. Mm -hmm. So the filling to dough ratio was, I think it was fantastic. And the fillings were incredible. I want to know what you did. Mm -hmm. to, but I've also never steamed bread before and had it mm -hmm. not turn out soggy. So I also put my timer on for exactly 10 minutes and I closed the lid on the steamer and I was like, oh, what's going to happen? And I mean, the steam's coming out and it's making the back of my stove all wet. And so I have to admit, I did peek. I was like, what's happening in here? And I, yeah. <laughs> I had to look up in it a couple of times. And so, and then after 10 minutes, oh my God, I took it out and they were light and fluffy and they were shiny on the outside and, but not sticky yeah. and they were all puffy. And then I chowed them down. And <laughs> I I wanted them to last longer oh, because I'm they so were happy to hear that. So that's why she wants them good. by the dozen. Yeah, she, does, she so, needs more. So before they came to us, did you bake them, steam them? What did you do to them before? Yes, after the proofing is done, you steam them, and then you can eat them straight away, or you can freeze them. So how long did you steam them for? Yeah, you're looking at about ten to twelve minutes on a medium heat. So you don't want that boiling, that rolling mm. boil kind of steam. You want a nice hot steam, like enough to cook the bread, but you don't want it to go any more over that. So you want some steam mm -hmm. to be coming from the top mm. out from the top of your steamer, but not too much. Okay. Um, I like to put the steamer on my pot of water and then start it. And then when the steam starts coming out, I time 10 to 12 minutes from then. Oh, okay. And what I find is that slow cook and, and that slow rise in temperature um, helps me to keep my bow smooth. After the steaming is done, you can't just open the lid. You're not supposed to just open the lid. You're supposed to keep the lid on for a few more minutes because that change in temperature is what gives that dimpled appearance on the bow, which oh, interesting. might not change the taste of it but this is just a good look <laughs> you want a good looking bow right <laughs> it's really a lot about the aesthetic of it isn't it there's it a is. lot of patience involved yeah and my yeah. tummy was not patient <laughs> <laughs> okay so tell us about the fillings that you had in there the first one I had so the bare one the white one the traditional kind of looking bow had a something called general sauce chicken which is a real big favorite in this house we love that chicken we make it all the time yeah <laughs> me too I and nobody too. complains um and then the second one was a, a Japanese curry Heather you've had Japanese curry before yeah. Aaron have you who knows it's just it's a, it's just a really mild I'll uh, eat anything sometimes I don't listen so well it's more just my face is in the dish <laughs> <laughs> it's good give me more <laughs> I don't think I could pick a favorite. I thought they were both very different, right? Like mm -hmm. I wasn't, I didn't know to expect the curry. And when I bit into it, I was like, Ooh, it's curry. Like that I was could kind of smell a smell the curry. I didn't really, maybe I wasn't, I was just like, give it to me, get it in my face. <laughs> you had some more competition in your kitchen. I got to do That's this true. all by myself. Maybe I had nice. to share. I didn't have the luxury <laughs> of like, of like 
checking it out and smelling it and like humming. No, I had to fight my way. <laughs> <laughs> it was the Hunger Games. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling the kids only take a very tiny bite. <laughs> so you don't, you both don't mm. think you would try this out at home? Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, you don't maybe. have to make them look cute. Maybe. You just have to maybe. make the bows. Yeah. Maybe. And you know, with the second batch that I made, it honestly, it is, I don't know if I, I will ever go back to that traditional bow again at home. Mm. I might just make it that way because it was so, it was so simple. Yeah, it's so nice simple. to have that easiness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Have you have you ever made the ones with custard in them? Yeah, uh, no, I have not. Hmm. Uh, but I do want to try, and I do have a recipe for it. But you ah. know, it's just custard powder that they usually use. For, oh, it's not like a yeah. from scratch thing. Well, then let's make it from scratch. Yeah, yeah, you go. have to up the. Yeah, challenge here. <laughs> and I've also seen some that are black bean paste. Is that right? Uh, black bean paste. And sometimes there's like a salted yolk, like an egg yolk filling. Oh. There, there are tons. But, but that's the great thing about making bao at home. Why do it? Because you can put whatever you want in it. I definitely really liked the flavor of the dough. Mm-hmm. It was really, it complemented the filling because it was sweet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was yeah. like that sweet and savory combo, which I wasn't expecting. I don't yeah. think other bows I've had have been sweet like that. Oh. Or they just didn't seem like that. Maybe because it was just too much dough. It didn't get the good contrast. I don't know. I yeah. really like that. I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm like, I'm, I'm so stoked now. <laughs> I'm so winner, happy. winner. And the family liked it too. My, fa- my kids and my husband were all like, oh, mm, so this happy. is so good. Oh, They're good, like, is there good. more? <laughs> I said, no, that's it. There will be. There will be. I promise. <laughs> Well, we found out in our bow, baking powder is a no. Is a no. The cake flour is a yes. Definite yes. Proofing. Use the proof hack. <laughs> use the proof hack. I'm going to use that next time I do my pizza dough. And uh, look at the pictures that I post and look at the way I made the second batch. It, it is much easier. You know, you don't have to fold anything. You don't have to have some sort of special bow folding technique. It's nothing like that. It's easy. It gives you tons of time to yep. make faces or not mm. and just walk away from it and wait for it to proof yep so i hope uh, i hope you folk will give this homemade bow a try why make one because you can put anything in it and so for my next batch i think it's going to be filled with chocolate <sighs> Ooh, sign me up mm-hmm. try that one that's it for this episode bye, bye. and now for the fine print You can find pictures and recipe links on Instagram and Facebook at Three Kitchens Podcast. Feel free to leave us a comment or a suggestion for future episodes. We'd love to hear from you. And of course, if you like and subscribe, that helps more people find us. This is too good. Mom, I can't stand it. Oh, ma'am, this is too good.